Okay, meet with me again, Dimas from Not Afraid Channel. Today we are gonna talk about something that is fundamental, which is in between uh, classical economics <coughs> and Keynesian economics. So here, classical economics comes from actually Adam Smith in 1700, which is known as classical economy and later it's developed into neoclassical economics and uh, adapted by recent economic theory. And the second one is by John Maynard Keynes, which come with Keynesian economy. So why it matters, okay, between both of them. First, uh, about the time. So in the long run, uh, theory Adam Smith it works because they believe on a couple of things that we're going to talk today and in the short run John Keynes it's actually work especially during recession period okay uh, but before we talk about this as I want to say it's like economics okay economics it's not natural law so all what it's come in the economics, it's something uh, we try to perceive as um, as the theory of thought that is based on uh, Minsky. If you're following the latest discussion in economics in human Minsky, the theory can have two sides. First, it could be the lens which make us focus, and the other can be blinder which make uh, which make us like ignoring a couple of different things when the reality is coming. Okay, so first we're going to Adam Smith here. Let's make it a bit smaller. Okay, what's in Adam Smith theory? So in Adam Smith, there are a couple of points that we need to underline here. First is no government intervention what does it mean so in Adam Smith theory the economics in the long run the cuts consumer they will reach their maximum utility and production will reach their maximum uh, profit free from government intervention okay uh, that's what classical economics believe so what does that mean we can go here and we try to create okay we try to uh, describe how the economics going and uh, what does it mean in economy? Okay, let's make it a bit bigger. So based on uh, classical theory, how does it work? Okay, first we define what we know as the price. This price is uh, uh, it's flexible. So when we pull up, this is the QF. This is what we know as a full capacity production. So here is the aggregate supply. Maybe I will make it like also things to remember. P is the price, which is also used rate as uh, wages. Okay. And in classical economics, we believe that uh, there is also a flexibility of wages, which is if the price goes up, the salary of people also goes up. That's what's uh, in classical economic belief. Okay, uh, let's continue. So here we have what we call as aggregate demand. And here is the GDP of the country. Okay, 
so GDP as you know the formula of GDP is what government spending plus investment plus consumer spending plus if it's open economy we you know like there will be export minus import that's what the GDP stands for and then in aggregate demand right here so all the according here we know what's that what, what does it mean okay so as is aggregate of supply Okay, we got all of them. So, what does it mean in classical economics? So, in classical economics, when we, when the customer reach the maximum capacity of the production in certain level of T, so everyone, uh, uh, so it's like all the economics start to fill the full capacity of production. At this point, if the customer or uh, people with their own wages or salary they could achieve and buy uh, the product so we are supplying the demand and equilibrium is in here so is equilibrium. okay but as the time being for example people start to get more money because they will get like higher salaries so the aggregate of uh, demand is goes up into this point so in the yellow color so it will be easier to understand so it's like aggregate demand too is the time that people do earn more okay so the price is going into here okay so the price goes up the salary goes up the okay, demand goes up and economic once again with their own equilibrium and then because well okay people get more money and more money okay that demand up again at a certain point the inflation goes up because the prices goes up we call it as inflation the salary also goes up and all the time the Q or the production is always all the time in full capacity okay and for the time since uh, people the price will not go up anymore because as you know like for example uh, for a price of a burger uh, you will not pay more than I don't know fifty dollar for a piece of hamburger so in the time for the long run finally the price goes down again uh, let's write it here Okay, so as the time being, the price finally finds its own equilibrium uh, for the very long run. Let's draw it here. So it's for example P4. And this is with the same like here full capacity of production. Okay. So finally it's reached the equilibrium in the long run and all of them is running without any intervention from the government okay free from from government everything live on invisible hand on the market but this not always right based on commission theory why at some certain of level this invisible hand doesn't work anymore why does it happen let's see in um, 1930s in the great depression it doesn't work 
Okay, so now time for John Maynard Keynes. A couple of things that it's make John Maynard Keynes uh, believe is like classical theory. Okay, classical theory works at certain level. And Keynes also believes in the long run. We are all dead. So there is no like long run. No one will live forever. Okay. Uh, and the second one is uh, government is needed. Through their instrument, which is like monetary and fiscal policy, and in turn, in the recession, there is sticky wages. Which what this mean? It means like. At certain point, people doesn't want to earn less than some of point, and production also doesn't want to produce a product less than some certain price. So let's see how it works with Keynes. Let's draw it here. So this is before like price, which is described also as a wages. Then this is GDP, which is consumption plus investment. Or maybe let's write it one more time so it will be easier. GDP, which is consumption plus investment plus government spending plus export minus import. If it's open economic, okay. Okay, and now the aggregate supply. Let's start from this point, almost similar, which is QF or full production. For production here means like everyone in the country they are working, so no one actually doesn't work. Even someone who maybe play the games in the computer and so on, it's actually producing some amount of money. If you don't want to call them as unemployed, uh, uh, like. Uh, person or something everyone is working so here it's the we call it as the classical range then at this certain of point we found what we call it as intermediate range Okay, that's supply before. Okay, and here we call it as Keynes range. What does it mean? Keynes range here it means that here we experience what we call it as the sticky wages. Okay. Let's see. Later we will talk about uh, what's going on in economy. So here in the economy, for example, we know like when people reach in 1930s, for example, okay, or, uh, or when we know it's a Great Depression. Let's make it easier. Okay. Uh, U.S. economy they can produce here in the amount of. Let's make it bigger because it's easier. Okay. 1929 U.S. economy they have in the give of Great Depression of financial crisis they are having. The that demand here, the economy run in the amount of 130 
50 billion US dollar okay. in 1929. As the time goes by, it turned out that there are like collapse in financial market and um, many different things that the economic system they cannot support uh, they cannot bail out the recession because everything is based on the gold the money so you don't have any more gold so how come you print more money that's the point so in 1930s the economy started to going into the process of going down like plummeting the un unemployment goes down from let's point it here in yellow the green color so in 1930s the GDP goes down at this point because people basically have like all the price all the salary goes down at this point in 1929 okay so the GDP shrink into this point and it makes the economics experience the crisis so let's draw it here should be actually aligned with the So let's remove this. goes down the production is actually not staying in the same level but the production also goes down it means in Keynesian times the economy is not following what is happening based on classical economy the classical economy we believe like all the time the amount of production is stable but in uh, Keynesian theory it's not so when the price goes down the production also goes down in certain in this level okay and then in 1930s like 1933 the economics okay let's do it again here the price is in here the gdp goes down by 50 percent in two for the Seven billion USD. What does it mean? It means like the the price is doesn't goes anymore down, but the production is goes until this level. So it's a rather like if it's GDP, it consists of consumer investment and government spending, export, import it goes down could be like people importing more the government doesn't have any more money to pay for everything so the news the demand is in here and the economic shrinking shrinking so we're going into great depressions and financial uh, financial and economic crisis and then the economy goes down again to this point and the price is still like in the steep, sticky level okay okay continue uh, and then start in 1933 uh, President Roosevelt they make a new deal so what is new deal let's make it as a Fifteen minutes, one minute, two, three, and four. Here, there are like two things. First is connected with work. So, a work relief. Everyone get the work. Everyone need to have a work. And then income relief, which is all the income goes to customer. And they try to boost the economy 
by government intervention, which is through fiscal policy from Keynes. Okay, and by the time, because there are fiscal policy, people start to earn and get more money, everyone should work. So, start in 1933, the economy goes back at the point where they should go. So, because of in, in government intervention, the economy goes back here and here. Uh, in, 1930, in 1940s, the economy come back again at this point, so they double. So, okay, in 1940s, they call the GDP goes back into 92 billion US dollars. And then, after 1940s, they are able to cut the unemployment. Okay. Until 1940s up, the unemployment that it was 25% in 1932 goes to 4.7%, which is improvement in economic and economy start to produce in full capacity one more time so I'm um, sorry if it looks very complicated but that's so in Keynes government intervention is needed to put the economic back and we believe there are like sticky wages that people basically doesn't want to earn less than at some kind of point and when the economy goes back to classical level then the invisible hand could work again Okay, so that's um, different between Keynesian and classical economy. I hope it's clear and explaining and perhaps some of you that confuse and have a homework about it, hopefully it will be good. Thank you.